Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Z20 Moreau Space Plane mod, which was originally made by forum user Iron Cretton. It has now been taken over by user Well. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a kerbalized, stock alike version of the dinosaur space plane. And I love that particular space plane design. And we have actually seen, I believe, one or two other mods that have brought this into the game, so I always do like seeing different mod makers' takes on it. So let's jump into the, actually, the space plane hangar, considering it's a space plane, and have a look at the parts we do get out of this. Now, we are going to just pop in the cockpit real quick here, zoom in, and then briefly look at it in comparison to the Mark One, just to sort of show off the size so you get a good idea of what we're looking at here. Here. And uh, as you can see, they are pretty close in size, just the different hull shape with the flat sides and bottom of the Moreau space plane cockpit here are the really only difference. Other than that, though, a very, very comparable, good looking cockpit there. I do very much enjoy it, and the stock like look is very apparent. And for me, very appreciated. So let's bump that off now. We no longer need that now that you have a size comparison. And let's just leave on the Moreau space plane parts here. Now, as for this particular cockpit, it's a pretty fun one with a minimum of one crew member to operate with a maximum crew capacity of one. It has a built-in data transmitter, RCS, reaction wheel, the usual crew report, 100 electric charge, and 10 monopropellant. So all in all, a pretty good and a useful cockpit. I do very much enjoy it. Now then, after that, we sadly have nothing in fuel tanks, engines, or command and control, but in structural, we have two different parts. One is an adapter to change this from this particular hole shape to the 1.25 meter size category there, so you can launch this on top of a rocket, which is typically pretty convenient to have. And then the other one is a uh, another adapter and putting it up to the 1.875 size of fuel tanks, engines, etc. Both of which are decouplers there. Now you can see that it's a little bit bigger up at the top and that's because for this thing to function, or well, at least for it to fit better, it will need another part that we'll get to here in a moment. But other than that, a good usable adapter and like I said, both of them decouplers so you can just release your space plane from your rocket. Now, next in the coupling, we've got nothing. In payload, though, we have the bummy cargo bay door, which we can pop on here. And it's, yeah, just a nice little cargo bay with a door that can open and close, which is convenient for payloads. Now, then, after that, in aerodynamic, we have a couple of things. We have, first and foremost, the delta wing for this particular thing, which we can pop on right there. A very good-looking wing, and does have some built-in RC and monopropellant and of course being a wing is a lifting surface we do also have a tail fin which is a control surface which we can just kind of pop on uh, there very nice and then an elevon control surface that fits in right in uh, this slot here if I can actually rotate it correctly ish there we go it fits into that location and then after that, on ground, we do have the small landing skids for this, rather than wheels, which we can pop on right there, and extend, and there we go, we have a beautiful, useful skid. Now, in thermal, we got nothing. Electrical, nothing. Communication, nothing. And science, nothing. But the remaining parts are all down here in utility. And the first one we got is the High Words Crew Cabin, which can hold an additional two crew members for your journey, and also has a built-in data transmitter and crew report. And it goes quite nicely right back there. And the final part we have is the... Oh boy, I don't even want to pronounce that. Silbervogel? 
That's probably entirely wrong. Service connector, which is that part that I did mention earlier, then you can use with the structural adapter here. Now it fits beautifully. And this little service connector is also a command module with a minimum of one crew member to operate. Has a built-in data transmitter, RCS, the usual crew report, 50 electric charge, and a hundred monopropellant. So quite handy to have all of that, which is a very good. And now that is all the parts here for the Maru space plane. So you've just got to throw it all together and make your particular version of the long lost dinosaur space plane which I very much enjoy now I of course did uh, build one of these things over in the vehicle assembly building since the dinosaur was meant to be rocket launched so let us go and where did I put it there it is and we'll fill up the crew slots and go to launch and take a look at what all we do have here now of course the dinosaur was meant to kind of be an either or sort of ship with, uh, you know, kind of a modular design to it, and I make kind of an elongated one where we have both the cargo bay door here as well as the crew cabin, which... Huh, I must not have saved the last thing I made on here. I did actually add some stability enhancers last I was in the VAB, but oh well. Let's move that over and take a look, of course, at our internal views here. Now, it is reusing one of the stock in-game cockpits, but you know what? I'm actually perfectly okay with that because at least we have a cockpit. It always kind of... Uh, I don't want to say worries, but kind of weirds me out whenever you get a... Uh, cockpit that's just like a black void of nothingness. So I do like at least a placeholder cockpit of some variety for our Kerbals to use. Now, of course, also in the back crew area, we are reusing the same sort of a deal here with one of these stock interiors. And yeah, that is the interiors we have. Now let's actually launch this thing up. Of course, I have attached it to some standard stock fuel tanks and engines via, of course, the a 1.875 meter adapter and let's launch and there we go oop I didn't put the skids in there we are put those away and yeah that's that's the Moreau space plane it's a fun little thing I as I've said several times here oh boy I accidentally just made it go wobbly let it go uh, but yes, like I said earlier, I love the design of the dinosaur space plane and wish it would have become a real and usable thing. So I always love seeing things like this in Kerbal Space Program so we can kind of play around with what could have been. And this is a fun little version of it. I, of course, do always like stock-alike things. And I do believe, actually, at the moment of the ones of these that we've looked at in the past, I think this might be the only one that's up to 1.7. I'm not 100% certain on that, but if so, that's a fun bonus for it. But yes, if you would like to have a look at this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description, as per usual. But that is going to be it for this episode, my friends. So I hope you have enjoyed, and that you do come back for the next episode, when hopefully we'll be looking at another wonderful mod. But that's going to be it for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. You do come back for the next one. Until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!